Hey guys, how are you doing? This is Zed from Zed Outdoors. I hope you're having an awesome day. So once again, I'm with a dear friend of mine, Mance, who's a head instructor at Wilderness Pioneers. Mance, how are you doing? I'm well, Zed. Welcome back. Welcome back. Same day. Excellent stuff on the same day because we've recorded two previous videos. Now, what this video is is a continuation of a series I'm doing uh, videos I've been doing with Mance, and we're in the historic city of Oxford in a beautiful woodland. Now, what we're doing is we've been recording today a series of videos on making natural cordage now we've recorded two previous videos that have been very well received both using cedar bark so we're using cedar bark and one using cedar roots and in this particular video what Mance is kind of showing me is the process for using bramble to make natural cordage now if you've been following my video recently or any length of time uh, you'll be seeing my progression on my bushcraft base camp and if you saw my video where I've done a recce of the site you can see that there was bramble everywhere literally as far as the eye can see so this particular video is very apt for me in my base camp because this is what i'm going to be using to make natural cordage from my base camp location so this is the first time i've seen this process being done live let alone on video and so what mance has kindly allowed me to do is as well as showing me the process on how to make cordage from bramble he's also allowed me to record this to serve as a teaching aid for you should you wish to go out and do the same also so like i said this is a continuation of previous two videos that i would have linked to down below in the description now we're here now and what we're going to do now we actually found a spot where we found some bramble so mance is going to kindly now show us the process from start to finish on how he will make natural cordage using bramble So Mans, we've obviously come across some bramble now, which we're going to uh, forage. Yep. Um, just a quick question before we kind of carry on with the actual kind of process of uh, turning it into uh, a cordage. Uh -huh. And that is, what is the difference uh, in terms of identification between bramble and normal stinging nettle? Okay, stinging nettle tends to grow vertically. There's an example right here. There you go. So, looking at it. Sting nettle will grow vertically with opposing leaves and as we know brush against it we're going to get stung whilst a bramble tends to be long strands and creates a bush um, and this, a bramble can grow anything up to a centimetre a day Wow! Um, depending on ideal conditions um, as you can see there's a distinctive difference between the leaves the bramble, I mean the sting nettles are opposing leaves growing off a main stem, growing upwards, whilst with the brambles they're alternate leaves as we go up the stem in a nice long horizontal creeping. Right. Okay. So we don't need that sting nettle at the moment. Let's get rid of that. So this is what we want from the bramble. Um, late spring, summer, ear, Early summer is the best time to collect brambles for cordage. Uh, as we know, uh, when we go through the year, the bramble becomes really woody and the fibres as a consequence become very woody and quite um, brittle. So the best time to collect brambles is around this time of year. And where are we? We're in June at the moment here in the UK. So just moving it around, you can see it is still quite flexible. And although the tip uh, fibres won't be as brilliant. As we go down the stem we'll be collecting a lot of fibres from here and you can see some previous year's growth where it's gone over winter how woody it's become and very very brittle and the fibres are just too far gone at that stage. Uh, the one tip I can give you when collecting brambles is don't scream. Is don't scream and there's nothing wrong with using gloves. Okay, so we're going to collect this strand. I can be a lot firm with it now. And just use your knife, reach down to roughly where you want it. There's the length that we want. That's a decent length. It's not the longest. Uh, I have collected bramble lengths up to 12 foot in length. Gosh. Um, oh. Nice long fibres from it. Um, wearing gloves, um, particularly at this time of year, I can just strip. Is there a, 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 a direction you go when you're doing that? Um, you can go in either direction, it doesn't really matter, but what I tend to do when I'm stripping is go against the leaves. So you can see the leaves are growing to my left, 
or viewers your right. I always come opposite um, that way. As I go down the stem, I'm ripping the leaves off as well. As you go through the year, the spines, as many of you will know, will become very hard. So just being able to do it with gloves isn't going to be easy. And for that, just use your knife and use the back of the knife and just scrape the spines off or the thorns in this case. Um, last thing we want is them digging into us and particularly when we get onto the later stages of actually prepping and pulling the cordage out mm -hmm. we want as many of those thorns removed. Right. Okay so. So now shall we should head on over and start proceeding with the next step? Yeah we've got one that'll be enough for us. I may grab another as we go along and we'll head over and prep this for the cordage. Perfect. So Mance collected a bramble, what was the first step? So obviously we've uh, removed the outer uh, thorns. Thorns. Yep. And so now... Now we need to get access to this very, very thin layer here. Right. So you can see that sort of white spongy level, a layer. Uh, that is the core of the bramble, which is just pure pith we need to get rid of. And do you remember the cedar bark, how mm -hmm. we had to remove the outer? So we need to remove the outer layer to get at that really, really thin layer of fibres going around the pith. So there's two ways of doing it. One, you can just take the fibres away mm -hmm. and then strip the outer bark off afterwards. Or you can strip the outer bark off first and then get access to right. the inner layers and what I'm going to do is strip the outer off first so just using my knife I'm going to use the back of the knife I'm just going to go down the different facets faces of the bramble and just very gently because I don't want to cut the inner fibers just remove the outer you see there's not a lot of pressure going on and if it starts skipping, uh, rather than me putting more pressure on, I'm just going to just remove and just take it really gently. Particularly with our bushcraft knives, which tend to have a 90 degree edge on the back, um, because obviously the 90 degree edge comes in really useful for fire lighting, we want to make sure we don't go into the fibres on the inside and inadvertently cut them. It's a very light removal, isn't it? It's it not... is. Particularly at this time of year where everything is still young. You know, as I was saying earlier, once we go into summer more and more, the, it becomes woodier and a lot tougher. But at this time of year, where we've still got a lot of fresh growth, we want to be very gentle with it because the fibres are still quite young and soft, more importantly, which will help us produce some really nice cordage. Where do I lose that there? So Matt's all that has been removed now, what's the next step in the process? Yeah. Now we need to separate those fibres from the pith. And for that we're going to go down the route of what we do with nettles. We're just going to bash them up a little bit. Um, you don't need to be really, really tough with this, but you do need to be a little bit tougher than what you would if you were prepping nettles. And as I'm going down, I'm just rotating the stem. And in essence, what I'm trying to do is separate the fibers that I want from the inner pith and that will make it significantly easier separating the two. Pay attention to where you've had the nodes from the leaves 
because there's a lot of fibres concentrated in that area. And just make sure we get all around that. And we just work our way all the way up the stem. And obviously as you come to the thinner section of the brambles, it gets softer, it doesn't need the same level of bashing as what we did down at the base of the stem which was thicker. Okay, now what I always like to do is I just go down the whole length of the um, bramble that I've just bashed, make sure that there's no stiff areas left in there where I haven't been able to get through um, or separate the fibres from this uh, from the pith within it. It just makes the job easier as we go along and it's worthwhile spending that time getting it right in the first place rather than having to go back. Okay so I'm happy with that. Now I separate the fibres from the pith. There we go, so you can see the fibres that produce our cordage just coming away nice and easy from our pith. And this is the outer part we're going to use for the actual cordage? It is the outer part, yes. Like in nettles, it's the outer part uh, where all the fibres are, which are in essence the blood vessels of the plant. And they're just long, long tubes. And again, once you come to a slightly stiff area, just be gentle with it because as with the um, cedar cordage video where I said the long fibres are far more beneficial than lots of short ones because it saves us time in the long run. There we go. Okay, so this slightly greener area is where I didn't remove the outer um, covering. But this translucent is all the fibres from the bambles that we want. Okay, so now we have the next step in the process, Mance. Okay, so as you can see, we've got quite wide fibres here. And what we just want to do, or the nature has almost done it for us, is split it into equal uh, widths. So all I'm going to do is just carry on with that and just get myself some nice long lengths of fibres. Back, where is that split there? It's getting a bit thin, so I'll get that way. Even, let's go back here. Okay, so from one bramble length, we now have five strands that we can work with. Now, the one thing we need to be aware of out here, particularly on a day like this, it is really hot. Now, these fibres are beginning to dry really, really quickly. So. Although I would allow these to dry and re-wet them, like we've discussed in some of the previous videos, I'm going to go ahead and show you just how to do the cordage. But if it does start getting too dry and starts getting brittle, the easiest way is just to re-wet it again. And so, slight offset from the centre, as I said in the cedar cordage video, it allows us to put fibres in at a later stage and offset them so we don't build a weakness in. So essentially one side is slightly longer than the other. Yeah. So And that's go. just one piece you've got there, right? That is just one piece. So you can see one side is what, about six inches shorter than the other? Yep. So I know that's the middle. Sometimes worthwhile just licking your fingers and all we're going to do is start that two ply process again. You can see how thin this is in comparison to the cedar cord. So with that one, just to recap, you, you turned it... Okay, I'm right-handed, like most normal people. Sorry, lefties. 
Okay, so I twist away from me. Mm -hmm. and so the furthest one, I twist away, reach round with my little fingers, grab the second strand, and then I twist towards me. Mm -hmm. Then I move my left thumb and finger, which is pinching the overlap, just move it forward to pinch that new overlap. So again, twist away, towards me. Away, towards me. Twist away, grab, towards me. Twist away, grab, towards me. And the important thing is to keep it very tight. Don't loosen it up. Make it really tight. And once you get the knack of it, it just becomes really easy. Notice the distance that I'm keeping my fingers from it. I'm not all the way down the strand. I'm only about a centimetre or so away. That allows me to put a nice twist in, just with one finger rather than having to let go. Grab towards me. And I keep doing that and just moving my left hand just forward down the cordage. Okay, so there we go. Let's begin to see a nice bit of cordage coming in. And we can carry on with that and then as we run out, like in the cedar cordage, we'll just add another strand in. If one starts getting too thin, and I'm noticing it's not laying properly, then I'll just add another strand in to thicken it up. It doesn't matter how much of an overlap or how many overlaps we add in, or extra strands. As long as you coil it properly and tightly, then it'll be fine. You may notice my fingers moving away, it's because these fibres are getting dry. Nice hot day so I'm just licking my fingers just to allow that traction and that grip that I need in the rotation of these fibres. So Mance, we're coming to the end of obviously one length of it. We are. So we want yep. to add on another piece in. So we need to add on like you rightly said. So what I'm going to do as you can see, this fibre, which is the shorter one of the two, has started coiling. So I'm just going to uncoil that slightly so I go back to the straight strands. And I'll get my next piece. And as you can see, this end is quite thick now. So this was the thick end of the fibre compared to the thin end. So I want to add a thin to thick. So what the main reason behind it is that I don't get uneven size in fibres. I want a nice thin piece. Here's one. You can see it's getting quite dry, so I'm just going to lick it a bit. Just get some moisture back into it, make it pliable again. Then I'm going to do an overlap. And you can see where my last twist was. I'm going to give itself, give it some decent overlap. It doesn't matter about the extra. I'm just going to pinch it and then all those I'm just going to twist in. And I do an initial twist like so, just to hold the fibres in so I don't have two separate sets of fibres there. So now that's in, I can just carry on. And see that one fibre is now just a little bit too thick for me. We're getting two different sizes, there's a millimetres difference between them. So I am going to add another fibre in right now because I don't want them going too thin. So that goes there. And twist that one in. There we go. And that's roughly about the same size. So in short you're constantly just trying to keep it the same width for a while yeah. basically. Yeah because that's where the strength comes from. If we suddenly have an uneven sizing of it, the thicker stuff is going to be stronger than the weaker stuff, and particularly if you were using bramble cord, just say, for a fishing line, we want an even strength all the way through. 
that way the tension of the fighting fish gets passed all the way up the line rather than going up to a certain section hitting a weak spot and then snapping there you go you can see my cordage has got a little bit thicker but the idea has come forward I could have spent a little bit more time just getting it perfect but it lets the viewers see and you guys at home see the principle behind it and because I've got such long lengths I'm gonna to have to I'm spending more time now separating the two different strands at the end of the length so they don't end up becoming a twisted knot at the far end All right, Zed, so what we've seen is just by splitting the bramble into the way it wanted to go in nice long thin fibres from what are these, about five millimetres, maybe six millimetres and coiling them we can get nice thin cordage but you need cordage for your primitive shelter, don't you? Yes. That is going to be too thin. The strength is there but making something like that you're going to need loads of it to coil round. Now the other way of doing it it's just by using the whole width of the bramble mm -hmm. and rather than splitting it off like I did we'll just use it from there and it's again exactly the same principle in a twist and just coil with the whole length Ah, oh, interesting so you don't separate it you out. don't separate it out no now if it's just going on your general shelter cordage you don't even need to take the outer bark off like I did but we can see straight away that the diameter of the cordage that we're making is going to be significantly bigger. Oh wow, yeah that's a big difference. Isn't it? Okay, and something like that will be more than strong enough to uh, for your shelter. I've made um, cordage uh, from brambles just two ply roughly that thickness I've let it dry before I corded it and I have pulled my weight up uh, just on that cordage so it is very 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 strong cordage and in, when I'm shelter building if there's brambles around it is my go-to cordage natural cordage because brambles as we know guys gets everywhere and you've got nice long lengths, sit down in the evening around the fire once you've spent that time stripping all the uh, bramble, I mean the thorns off you just sit there, almost becomes a meditative state there you go, and that is very very strong and that's what I would suggest with the brambles you've got at your site. Make loads of that cordage and build your shelter with that. So there you go guys, that is a wrap for this video where Mance has kindly taught us, and myself included, how to make natural cordage using bramble. Mance, thank you so much. Sid, you're welcome. It's been a hot day today. It's been awesome. Third it? video in a row, we're doing well. Yeah, how many more? That's two. We're going to keep pushing him until he breaks. So he breaks into a heap on the floor and starts crying. Not a chance. <laughs> Not a chance. So there you go. That was the first time I've seen the whole process in person myself. Like I said, the bramble is somewhat quite important to me personally. But this is the primary uh, resource I'm going to be using at my base camp to board a lot of cordage. So it was nice. It was unexpected for me to see kind of the variations in terms of thickness. Mm. Uh, I thought that was very useful. It doesn't, something I didn't even think about. Yeah. You know? Uh, beforehand. It's actually something big uh, I learned today spending time with mounts on the natural cordage how you can kind of really affect the thickness of the cordage you know depending on how you want to use it and manipulate the material. Totally. It just comes down to the initial quantity of fibres you put in. Right. And the more fibres you put in the more careful you have to be with twisting it but the principle is exactly the same. One question actually I forgot to ask you Mm -hmm. When we've processed the, uh, the bramble yep. uh, and we've got it ready to weave, so let's say you do all of that and you're going to weave at a later date, mm -hmm. um, what would be the process in between that? Uh, so for example, so you process all the bramble, okay. yep. uh, you've removed all the thorns, you've taken all the outer kind of skin off, mm -hmm. um, and now let's say I do a load of that and I want to take it home 
and then a couple of days later I want to then weave it yep. into cordage. So it's going to be exactly the same like the cedar cordage, okay. um, where we allowed it to dry off. Just re-soak it and make it pliable again and just go from there. So when you say re-soak, what would I do? What would I just... just uh, well, there's two ways, depending on how dry it becomes and how long you've left it. What I would do is initially is just dip it in water and leave it for an hour or two. Okay. Depending on how thin your fibres are. Right. The thicker the fibres, the more time they need for moisture to come back okay. in. The thinner the fibres, the less. Okay. Right. And then just hang them for a little bit. Just right. let that excess moisture drip off and then go for it. And right. like what we were doing out there in that sun, what was it, 25 degrees today? Easy, easy. Uh, Celsius for our American friends. Um, it was a hot day and the fibres would begin to dry off. And yep. all I was doing was just wetting them in my mouth. If yeah. you revert to that, just have a little pot of water and just rub it in with your fingers. Right. Because all we're doing is putting that little bit of moisture back in to make it pliable again so that we can um, plait it or twist it into the two-ply. Perfect. Well, I love putting it to the test. Something I've mentioned in my Bushcraft Basecamp video, uh, that is... The natural cordage I'm going to be making, in fact everything I'm going to be making is going to be put to the test. Uh, and so it's good to hear that bramble cordage is quite strong when done properly. Uh, it's okay. very, very strong. You will be surprised how strong it is. You know, People look at it and go, brambles, this is just a pain in the backside, rip it up. Mm. But the amount of cordage, yes it takes a little bit more prep time than nettles, mm -hmm. and people are worried about the thorns. We've shown you a way around it. Yeah. Okay, take those thorns off. The strength in the cordage is phenomenal. Mm really really good as I said I've thrown a length of cord over a branch and pulled myself up on it right and that's 85 kilos here did you have the rocky theme music playing no but I did have people laughing at me you're never gonna do it <laughs> how I managed it I've no idea that's fantastic now I'm glad to really looking forward now and thank you once again for taking the time out you're uh, to welcome. show me and the viewers at home so as a recap I'll put a link below to the previous cordage videos I've done We've managed to continue this natural cordage making series, so please do go check those out. Obviously, I'm doing a Bushcraft Basecamp series where I'm going to be putting this into practice. And obviously, on my channel, I'll have a, a collection of those available for you to view if you haven't done so already. We may possibly record one or two others, just kind of depends on time. Uh, either way, make sure you subscribe to this channel to stay updated on future videos. And last but not least, without a shadow of a doubt, I'm going to put a link below to Mance's youtube channel which is under wilderness pioneers the school that he runs in oxford uh, i'm going to put a link to his youtube channel they've done some amazing videos some really really detailed videos so to put a link below please it will mean the world to me if you go and check that out you like what you see hit the subscribe button secondly i will put a link to the facebook page uh, belonging to Mance where you can engage with them and obviously they share a lot of content there also and a third link I will put to their website where you can find out more about the actual work that they do here in Oxford and they run some incredible training with some fantastic feedback and I'm not just saying that they really are they're some of the best that are out there so once again I really do appreciate you taking the time out Mance said pleasure once again I appreciate you guys watching and from Mance and myself I hope whatever you do, you have a blessed day, a blessed week ahead. This is Ed from Zell Outdoors. Peace out.